Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to talk a little bit about attaching asset files created from a scriptable object uh, to other scripts or model behaviors inside of your Unity project and why this is something that's useful. So here under this script I have called Directional Projectile Attack. I have a list called Event Modifiers which contains one of, as you would think, many event modifiers. So inside of that list, I have one asset file called aim rand underscore point thirty five. The point thirty five just to represent uh, thirty five percent randomness and the attacks, uh, basically projectile launch. Um, so that is actually an instance of a script and the script is a scriptable object which is one of the two categories that you can really use inside of Unity. One is mono behavior which is what you use for most stuff but the advantage of using a scriptable object is if you set it up right you can just create many different scriptable object files dot asset files that you can attach to scripts as you please without having them directly attached to a mono behavior. So you can use a scriptable object without that object being directly attached to the mono behavior. So if something kind of goes crazy with um, your Unity editor, you'll always have these .asset files there. It's almost like having a .csv file or a .xml file that contains a lot of data you're going to use for your Unity project but instead it's contained in a .asset file, which is core to Unity itself. So to clear up a bit more what I mean, let's go look at one of the prefabs uh, that I have, Ghosty Goat, where that asset file was being attached to. Now with any mono behavior, you have to have it attached to a game object. So if I was going to have, let's say, four or five modifiers attached to a character so that it modifies the attacks, um, then you would see like eight or nine scripts here attached. I already have three for the attacks, but what if each of those attacks have two or three modifiers? Um, and those modifiers need specific settings, so you need a script or a scriptable object. Then it would be a complete mess to work with here. But by having them stored in .asset files, reusable across different scripts, it kind of cleans things up a bit, in my opinion. So let's take a look at what a scriptable object actually looks like. I have this class aim randomness, which is inheriting from a couple classes. Down the line, you go back to the base class, which is projectile modifier. Inherits from scriptable object. This base scriptable object is uh, specific to a plugin I'm using. It's called Vax, and it adds a couple features to Unity. Um, but essentially, for the most part, a scriptable object and a base scriptable object are the same thing. So to create a scriptable object, you would inherit from scriptable object rather than mono behavior. Um, now, you work up the chain, you'll notice a few things. It doesn't have on awake methods or on update methods that you would have in a mono behavior. So, anything that you're going to have happen here, you're going to need another way to define that. You can't just have it update every frame unless you're going to have it update every frame on the mono behavior script which you're attaching it to. So in my case, what actually happens here is that this mono behavior script, the directional projectile attack, runs these scripts, the methods inside of them, at the time when they're supposed to execute. So basically this manages these other scripts and lets them know when they're supposed to execute. Now how do I create these .asset files out of their scripts? Well, I have menu items created for each of those scripts. Where I can go into tools, heart, battle, or create projectile modifier, and then the projectile modifier type that I want to create. So if I want to add a new aim randomness down there below, I just click on that script, it's going to make one for me. I can set the details in there, rename it, and put it in whatever other scripts that I want. Now how you actually do that isn't too complicated. Um, you would just create basically a create asset method and I don't think you have to have this in its own separate class uh, This is just to separate the unity editor from the uh, actual in-game scripts So inside of this script there's a method called create asset and that's how it creates the asset in the folder as you can see it uses uh, unity editor asset database um, and the important thing here beyond what this function does is creating one of these, I think they're called attributes. Uh, so unity editor dot menu item, and then you specify the path that this menu item is supposed to appear in inside of Unity. So it's creating 
um, a tool in, in the tools menu, subdirectory, heart battler, create projectile modifier, and then finally aim randomness. And if we go back to the tools, you'll see this exact same thing here. So uh, tools, heart battler, create projectile modifier, and so on and so forth. As you can see, that Vex mod I was talking about also has a few of its own. I don't think that this tool menu is actually default to Unity at all. It's an extra menu that I add in. Uh, for instance, if I was to go here and, I don't know, change this to potato, I think it would actually create a potato menu. And as you can see, as hilarious as that is, there is now a new potato menu inside of the Unity editor. Uh, so yeah, just put the path in that you want it to appear in. Write your function to create it, which is going to use create asset and, well, in my case, generate unique asset path. That's just to make sure that if there's a, uh, if the uh, path has already been taken up, it'll add a one to the end of the name so that it can create another app asset. Um, but yeah, to kind of sum up why scriptable objects are going to be useful for you inside of Unity, it's easy to create instances of those scripts as .asset files, kind of like creating uh, prefabs of your game object, very similar to that. And these asset files you can attach anywhere that you're going to take one of those files, basically. So you would have like a list of the scriptable object type, and then you can put as many of them in that list as you want, or you can just have a single item variable and attach it there. And I'm finding that it really does help to clean up your script management. So you don't have to have a billion things attached to every game object. You can separate it uh, between the inspector and what you actually have in your directory. And beyond that, if something does go wrong inside of the inspector, it maybe loses references to things, um, you will always have these .asset files inside of your project. So you can easily reattach them. Uh, the data here isn't going to go away unless you actually delete the files. Um, so it may help you in big projects for not losing all of the work that you've already been doing. So I've been Chris. I hope this gives you an idea of scriptable objects inside of Unity, what their purpose is, uh, why they're useful, and how you can set one up for yourself. I do recommend you give it a try if you haven't already. So thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you guys in my future videos.